Hello, everyone. Welcome to Hidalgo County Wellness Program 2021 Virtual Wellness Fair. This is our third live presentation, and I'm really excited that you're here with us. My name is Diana Walpa with the Hidalgo County Wellness Program, and I hope that you enjoy this presentation. But before we get started, I want to make sure that our technology is working for us today. So if you can see the slides clearly, and if you can hear my voice clearly, please click on the raise hand icon that is located at the bottom of our Zoom webinar software. Again, if you can see the slides clearly and if you can hear my slides clearly, please click on the raise hand icon that is at the bottom of our Zoom webinar software. Great, it looks like we're good to go technology-wise. Thank you for everybody who participated. Uh, I do have a couple of reminders before we get started. Reminder number one is that we have a total of uh, nine additional presentations as part of our 2021 virtual wellness forum. Therefore, if you haven't set up a reminder, I do encourage you to do so after this presentation. And reminder number two is that you are on listening only mode. However, you are able to submit your questions via our Q&A forum throughout the presentation, and we will have a Q&A session at the end of the presentation. Mm -hmm. At this point, I do have the pleasure of introducing today's speakers. We do have Dr. Ileana Cantu, Rebecca Escobeda, and Juan Gauna. Dr. Ileana Cantu is an Arosti certified provider in Edinburgh, Texas. She graduated from the University of Texas in Austin, Texas, and got her doctorate of chiropractic from Texas Chiropractic College. She's originally from Hidalgo, Texas, and has been with Arosti for seven years. She is passionate about providing the best soft tissue treatment to her patients to help her posit positively impact their lives. Rebecca Escobedo is a South Texas native who graduated from PSGA ISD. and open graduation, she attended Texas A&M University in Corpus Christi, where she obtained a Bachelor's of Science in Athletic Training and continues to hold her license. She has been with Rusty for the past nine years as a certified recovery specialist, impacting the lives of patients from Corpus Christi to the Rio Grande Valley. And lastly, but equally important, we do have Mr. Juan Gauna. Mr. Gauna is the Director of Business Development for our Rusty Rehab Centers, and he brings eight years of experience in the healthcare sales management and practice operations. Juan currently leads our Rusty teams to focus on employer caring partnerships in South Texas, and he was born and raised in South Texas. He is passionate about developing strategies to lower treatment costs, and most importantly, to educate and solutions to musculoskeletal pain for South Texas. Without further ado, I pass it over to you, Mr. Gauna. Thank you so much for being here with us. Thank you, Diana, for that great introduction, and good morning, everybody. I hope you're having a great day and you're enjoying all these great benefits that have been provided to you through this health fair. Um, like Diana said, we also have Dr. Ilana Cantu and we have Rebecca on the call. They're going to be walking us through a couple of stretches and exercises and talking about conditions and things. So um, what I'm going to do first is share my screen. There we go. Okay. So like we said, so we're from Arosti Rehab Centers, and today we're going to be talking about taking steps towards a better you. How to prevent injuries um, for runners or walkers by, you know, incorporating stability techniques and maybe some even some mobility. Um, but for those of you on the call that may not know who we are, let me do a quick introduction. So Arosti is a healthcare group of providers that specialize in resolving soft tissue injuries. So a soft tissue injury can anything on this list right here. So we have headaches, migraines, bottom of the foot pain, back pain, shoulders, pretty much everything that's on this list. If for some reason you do not see what you have going on on this list, doesn't mean we don't treat it. It just means we didn't have room for it on this little slide right here. Best way to find out what's going on is by coming into the office. We start off our appointment with a thorough examination to find out what the root cause of your condition or your pain is. Um, great example is if you're coming in with shoulder pain, we'll do an assessment to find out, is it a true shoulder injury? Is it coming from the upper back? Is it coming from the neck? All of this to kind of help us focus on where we're gonna treat. Now our providers use their thumbs to work on what we, call, what they're, what we call fascial tissue. So for those of you that may not know what fascial tissue is, Fascial tissue is a very thin layer of tissue that covers the entire body from head to toe. Um, it's responsible for a lot of the movements that we do. It helps kind of keep everything uh, put together. Best example I can use is if you've ever cleaned fajita for a cookout, a very thin layer of tissue you take off because it's nasty, that's exactly what fascial tissue is. It doesn't have a blood supply. So if it ever gets altered, damaged, tangled in any way, it doesn't have a way to self-heal itself. 
So like I mentioned, this is where our providers come in, using their thumbs, applying control pressure to get that tissue, that blood flow, everything to move the way it's supposed to. That's only one part of our treatment. The second part of our treatment is where we prescribe you active rehab. So these are stretches and exercises specific to your injury that are gonna help build up this tissue, make it nice and strong. I always tell patients when they come into the office, you're gonna learn three things. What happened, how it happened, but most importantly, how you can prevent this from happening again. We love our patients, but we don't wanna adopt you guys. So when you come in for an injury, the goal is to make sure we get out of pain as fast as possible, but you know how to take care of this again if it happens to you. Because some of these injuries occur can be happen because we are active runners or we go to the gym. We wanna make sure that we give you the tools and the steps to make sure you don't have to come back to the office. You can take care of it for yourself. On that note, um, we are offering VIP chats. So this is a 30 minute conversation with one of our providers. Um, it's a virtual call that you can talk to them about any injury or pain that you are dealing with. Uh, we'll walk you through the steps of an examination to find out if you are a candidate for ROSTI. Well, some of the ways that you will not be a candidate for a ROSTI is if you have a broken bone, fractured or torn tissue. Now we're not expecting you to know all of this coming into the office. That's where our examination comes into play. We'll determine if you have one of those conditions. If you do, unfortunately, that means you're not a candidate for a ROSTI. Basically, what it means is you won't get, you won't benefit from our treatment, and we don't want to waste your time and money. So if you come in to a visit or through the chat, um, we notice that you have a condition that we can't treat. We don't charge you for that visit. We let you know what we found, and then we'll lead you into the right direction. So that's kind of what a VIP chat is. Uh, we'll talk to you about it, and we'll let you know, you know what, a ROSTI is going to be one of your best options to get this resolved pretty quickly, or do we need to send out for that x-ray, MRI? Maybe we need to send you back to your PCP. Um, this little QR code right here, if you scan it with your phone, um, if you open up your phone to the camera function and point it to the screen, I'll go ahead and give you a link that you can fill out and get that register. I'll send the link through the chat in a little bit, too, so you can have something you can click on on your computer. But again, this is the link right here. This is the QR code. These are absolutely free. There's no charge to, um, to you, to the county. Um, we are offering it on this call for sure, but you can take this information to your dependents, any friends or family that you might know that's dealing with something. Um, full disclosure on the information, it will ask you for your group number. This is just to kind of keep us aware of where people are coming from, but we're still not going to charge anything towards insurance. So what we're going to talk about on this call, so again, this is more focusing on running and walking and being active. Um, so we're going to talk about common running and walking injuries. We're going to understand the difference of pain and symptoms. So each condition is going to have its own pain and symptom that we're going to talk about. We're going to understand why runners and walkers are more prone to developing these injuries. So we'll have Dr. Kanthu talk to us why this happens more often than others. And then we're also going to have Becky walk us through some tools for prevention. And then we'll leave some time towards the end to talk more about Arosti, the benefit, and how to schedule with us. So again, some of the common running and walking injuries that we do see come into the office, one of them is plantar fasciitis. We also have keyless tendonitis. Shin splints is also a big one. And then we have IT bands uh, injuries. So I'm going to have Dr. Kanthu walk us through each one of these conditions, letting us know what the condition looks like, what are some of the causes, um, what are some of the ways that we can prevent it. Um, if you have any questions, again, you can send them through the Q&A. I will answer them as they come in. Uh, I'll, do, I'll keep them anonymously so you don't have to put your name or anything to them either. It's all yours, Doc. All right, so plantar fasciitis. Plantar fasciitis is probably one of the most common running and walking injuries we do see in the office here. And it's it's pretty tough to treat if you don't know uh, pretty much the biomechanics behind it and where it's coming from. But once we get into, get you into the office, we can get a good evaluation and we do pretty good with uh, getting rid of the heel and arch pain that comes with the plantar fasciitis. Um, so what is the plantar fascia to start off? Right, so it is a thick ligament runs through the bottom of the foot all the way from the heel down to the um, the balls of your feet, pretty much right through the arch. So what it does is it's it supports the arch, your shock absorber. So when you're running and you're walking, it takes some of that pressure off of your foot so that it doesn't put so much pressure on your joints and your bones. Um, so what happens with plantar fasciitis is that the the fascia, the plantar fascia becomes inflamed and becomes uh, irritated 
and it causes pain mostly at the attachment point. So a lot of the times people will feel it right at the heel. Um, it starts off pretty gradual. So it may be something really small, you know, minor, doesn't really give you a lot of problems. And then over time it gets worse and worse. And that's when um, people usually seek out some sort of treatment. They start to try different things like different shoes and different arch uh, supports. Um, but um, really the plantar fascia has, a, that has a lot to do with what's going on in the ankle and the and the shin. So we'll look at that in the next slide, I believe. Okay, so yeah, so um, the pain there is going to be pretty sharp at the foot and the heel again. It's going to affect your biomechanics in your ankle. So one of the things we have to look at is um, how is your ankle moving? Right, so a lot of the times the calf will become very tight as we increase our activity. So um, this is going to feel worse after we do a lot of walking or running. Um, it's going to hurt when you take your shoes off, especially because now we, where there's no cushion on the bottom of your foot. You take your shoes off and try to walk on on the floor. Uh, you're going to be pushing pushing right on that area that's inflamed, and definitely worst pain. The worst pain you're going to feel is in the morning, taking those first few steps, walking out of your bed. Uh, usually, at first. Uh, it's not gonna, it's going to go away quickly. You know, it, it lasts for a few minutes and then it goes away over time as it becomes more severe. It's going to last longer and longer in the mornings or after that activity. So some of the things that could play a factor into plantar fasciitis are foot biometrics. You know, do you have a high arch? Do you have a, you know, falling arch or flat foot? Um, what is your activity level? Like, especially we will see this really commonly for people that are training for races or especially long distance races. And um, we'll see it as they start to increase their mileage. You know, I went from running, you know, one or two miles to now I have to do my long runs and we're running into, you know, 10 miles, 15 miles uh, on, on my long day. And that's when people will come in with this plantar fasciitis sort of pain. Now, the first thing to remember is you need to be in the proper shoe. So um, it's good to get evaluated at either a, a shoe store, a running store, and get the proper shoes uh, for your biometrics. So if you do have a high arch or you over supinate or over pronate, your you know, arch is falling, then it's good to get into the correct shoe that's gonna help your running form. Um, another thing is biomechanics sometimes you know, we're putting too much stress on certain parts of our body based on how we're running. So definitely getting into a good running form to, to minimize the impact on our joints and our feet is going to be super important. Good. Thank you, doctor, for that great information. I know one of the questions that came in was what type of tennis shoes do you recommend for somebody that walks, you know, more than 15,000 steps a, a day? Um, you do recommend going to a professional to kind of assess their walk, the gauge, the, the, the running technique and see what shoes best support them, right? Definitely, de definitely. So everybody's a little bit different. So um, there's not going to be one brand or one shoe that's going to be perfect for everybody. So that's why it's really good to go in there and ha go into the running store or a shoe store that does like a gait analysis uh, to kind of steer you in the right direction of what type of shoe. Hey, you need, you know, you over supinate or you over pronate, you need to get into uh, something that neutralizes your foot, get into something with good arch support or more ankle uh, support. Um, and that way you get into the shoe that best fits you. Perfect, thank you. Um, another question that came in, is plantar fasciitis curable? Definitely. So uh, coming into the office, we'll evaluate your biomechanics and gait and all of that to make to, to see where it's coming from. So once we identify where it's coming from, and a lot of the times this is coming from higher up, we're looking into the shin or even the hip. The hip is super important for plantar fasciitis. If we can get to the root cause of what's going, what's causing the pain, then yes, definitely we do, um, uh, we do treat and get rid of that plantar fasciitis. Thank you. So Achilles tendonitis. So first of all, the Achilles tendons right through the back of the heel, it ties into the, the gastrox and the soleus. So it ties into the calf muscles. Um, and it is the largest tendon in the body. So we're putting a lot of stress on this area because we use it every day. 
Um, so the tendonitis occurs when that tendon becomes inflamed or irritated. Usually it's an overuse injury. We're doing, we're doing a lot of running, a lot of walking, a lot of standing. Um, and so it's the, the inflammation is coming from that repetitive stress, but we'll see it a lot as, again, as people go ramp up on their mileage, they're running long distances there, or they're increasing their speed. So this is what's going to really get stressed out as you start to run sprints. We'll see a lot of calf strains and Achilles tendonitis if you're doing the high speed workouts, especially the speed workouts where you're like running short distances and have to decelerate, have to stop really quickly. Um, and then um, one of the other things, of course, to remember is making sure that you have proper running form, especially if you are running those long, uh, fast distances or fast speed or long distances. Um, so this, um, the tendonitis of the Achilles is going to be a little bit different in, as far as the location of the pain. So instead of like right at the bottom of the foot, like plantar fasciitis, it's going to be either the back of the heel or even a little bit higher into that lower part of your calf. And the pain is going to be sharp. Um, of course, it can start gradually. It can start like, oh, I start to feel a little achy or I like sort of feel a nagging pain after a run or after a walk. And then it does get pretty sharp. Um, it is worse in the mornings again with those rest positions. Um, and then getting into um, that standing position is going to put a lot of stress on that Achilles tendon and you'll feel that sharp pain as soon as you start walking. Um, so uh, a key player to this, of course, is going to be your your calf muscles since that Achilles tendon ties right into the calf muscles. So if your calf muscles are tight, the Achilles tendon will be tight and it can translate tightness to the bottom of the foot or in the back of the heel. Um, definitely looking at your arch. Are you um, flat footed, have a high arch? All of that's going to change how much stress is put on the tendon uh, shoes. Um, so this tendon takes a lot of the force as we run, especially with the longer distances. So as we're running longer distances, you have to make sure that you're changing out your shoes at the proper time. So every few, every few months, every, depending on how much you're running, every three to six months, if you're training for a race, you should be changing out your shoes uh, or at least switching out your shoes. So you shouldn't be running with the same shoe like every single day uh, of your training. You should have at least two shoes where you're going back and forth. That way you're not wearing out your shoes too quickly and putting extra stresses on your foot because your shoes are, are not giving you that um, shock, absorbent, so shock absorption anymore. All right, the next thing is shin splints. So shin splints. Um, it's, it's kind of a, a really common for people to have this, especially uh, as you start off your, your, your training or your walking or running, it's new. You start to feel aches and, and pains everywhere throughout your legs and your, your shins and your calves. Um, so this is kind of an umbrella term for just about any sort of aches, pains that you feel on the front of your shin, right? But true shin splints is, is the inflammation of the membrane of that tissue that goes right between the two shin bones. Um, it's very rare to develop. It's usually caused by an old ankle injury, twisting your ankle. Now it's caused a lot of uh, scar tissue and irritation, changed your biomechanics, and then that develops. What mostly people are feeling uh, when they say shin splints is gonna be a tendonitis. And it's gonna be a tendonitis of one of the three muscles in the front of the leg. So either that tib anterior, that's the one highlighted there um, on the picture, uh, that tibialis anterior. So, or the tibialis posterior, slightly more on that inside part of your shin or the peroneal muscles slightly on the outside part of the shin. All right, so, um, the symptoms for this are gonna be typically the pain is going to start either at the beginning of your walk or run. So you may feel, uh, okay, like really sharp pain or really naggy pain at the beginning uh, of your activity. And then um, after a while, it, it will you'll feel it not just with your walk or your run, but even 
throughout your day. So it gets worse and worse and worse if you don't take care of the tightness and the irritation and don't change your biomechanics as to what's, uh, what you're doing throughout your run. Um, so some of the things that could cause this is going to be, again, overtraining, doing a lot of mileage. So doing too much running or too much walking or so ramping up too quickly. And what that means is that you're starting, um, starting to train for something. And instead of gradually increasing your mileage or your speed, you, um, you go from very little mileage to a lot of mileage quickly, too quickly. So there should be a gradual increase in your mileage and your speed as you're going through your training. Another thing to keep in mind is running form. So if we're too tight through our hips and we're leaning forward through our runs or our walks and it puts a lot of stress on the front side of our body, which is gonna put a lot of stress on that front side of the shin. Um, training on unstable surfaces will also do this. So if you're used to running on the treadmill and then you go from the treadmill to like running on the street, that's really hard, then you'll, um, you'll feel some of that stress on there or running on gravel or a trail that's going to that's a change of terrain completely and you're you'll feel it through your shins and it'll cause more tightness and more irritation especially if you already have a little bit of that tendonitis going on and again all of this is going to uh depend on your biomechanics um and all of that can go up as high as the hips so if there's tightness anywhere into the calves the hips the knees anything all of that's going to put extra stress down into the lower leg and the shins um especially if you have those old ankle injuries or if you have weak glutes so weak glutes uh, plays a big role in this because you should be using your glutes to propel yourself through your motion through your walks and your runs but if the glutes aren't able to uh, keep up with what you're trying to do, then that puts extra stress on your lower extremity. Um, and yes, yeah, um, shin splints can be treated. Uh, again, it's evaluating the biomechanics, changing what's causing um, that change in bio biomechanics. So if your hips are tight, treating the hips. If the weeks are, if the glutes are weak, then strengthening up your glutes so that it takes the stress off of that of the lower extremity and the shins. Um, and then of course, taking away the tightness, anything that is tight, giving you good range of motion so that your ankle moves correctly, your knees are moving correctly and it, your muscles are able to activate efficiently. The next thing is IT band. So um, IT band is, um, is that tissue, that connective tissue that runs from the hip all the way down to the knee, it's iliotibial band. So um, it, its primary function is stability because it isn't a muscle, it's just connective tissue. So it provides the support to the knee um, and, and through the hip and everything through the leg, but it, get, it does get stressed out as we go through our activities. So a lot of the times when we have um, this pain, um, we're gonna feel that pain not just through the hip and the thigh, but through the side of the knee. And that's why a lot of the times it's called runner's knee. Um, it's most common in runners because it is a, an overuse type of injury that, um, that running causes, um, especially as you go up in your mileage. So you'll feel the pain or the soreness on that outside part of the knee. Um, it's typically going to start at the beginning or end of the walk or run, uh, and then it's going to only increase as you go, uh, as you keep going, and then you'll still feel it afterwards a lot of the times. Even after your run, you'll start, you'll continue to feel that soreness or that pain, um, it's a naggy sort of pain through the outside part of your knee even after you run. And again, that's gonna, going to be from ramping up too quickly, you know, going up in your mileage or your speed too quickly, or just doing a lot of miles. And, and we see this with a lot of our like half marathoners or marathoners. Um, one thing to consider again is form. Make sure you have good running form. Um, if you need help with running form, that would be something that 
running store can also help you with a lot of the times so they'll do like gait training or or running training as you do it so that you have the correct form um, and you're not stressing out your your body as much as you need to um, a lot of the times it is also going to come from those weak glutes that we talked about with uh, with the shin splints, but also tightness in the hips. So if your hips are super tight, uh, a lot of the times we sit for a lot of our work day or a lot of our day in general, um, that, that uh, makes our hip flexors really tight. And then we go and try to do a long run after our, or, or a speed work after our work day. And that, you know, going into that run with tight hips is only stressing out another part of the body so a lot of the times when we work through it band we have to work through the hip and stretch out the hip um, make sure that the hip is moving correctly so that it's not putting so much stress on the thigh and the side of the knee um, and also of course strengthening up those glute meats when we sit through a lot of our day we do um, we do weaken through the glutes, and that is going to be a big one for uh, for IT band. If those uh, glutes are weak, it's going to stress out that lower leg uh, quite a bit. Great, thank you, Doctor Drew, for walking us through those conditions. Again, these are some of the most common injuries that we see for uh, runners and walkers, but it doesn't limit us to just these. We'll do an assessment to find out exactly where is the injury coming from, where is the pain coming from, and that's what we're gonna take care of. So we'll talk a little bit more of that towards the end, but what we're gonna do now is kind of walk you through the preventive strategies you can start doing now to help prevent a lot of those conditions from actually occurring, or if you're kind of dealing with them now, maybe lessen the pain at the the pain a little bit. Um, so Becky's going to walk us through some mobility, some stretching and strengthening exercises. We definitely uh, encourage everybody at home to kind of try these along with Becky. She's going to walk you through them. Again, if questions come up, go ahead and put them in the question and answer. And then towards the, la uh, towards the end, I will make sure to get everything get answered. Um, but if you, for some reason, feel numbness, tingliness, sharp pain while doing this, come off of that exercise. Um, and then kind of, you know, send me a message or send us a, a question and we can kind of maybe correct it on there too. So I'm going to pass it over to Becky now. Hi guys, how's everybody doing? All right guys, so to start off, I'm going to introduce the foam roller. The foam roller is a tool we use in the office. It's actually really great of just breaking up anything that's tight, tender, any of those fascial distortions. So those knots within the muscle that don't allow you to function or move the way you want to. So since we are dealing with the lower body, you can see in the picture right here, the gentleman is using that foam roller, of course, on the calf is that first picture. Um, and then the IT band, the IT band is that tendon that runs from the side of the hip to the side of the knee. You can even do the glutes. So those glutes, your you know butt muscles are very strong, powerful muscles that actually help you run, um, run, squat, lift. A lot of that movement comes from those glutes and especially sitting a lot, those glutes do turn off. And the last one is the quads. So the quads, the entire length of those front muscles, especially those front muscles are always being activated. We're always going in that forward position. So the foam roller is just a really good safe tool. And then of course you can see they'll go from literally one breaking point to the another. So what that means is you'll go from, you know, right below the knee. So the calf muscle to the Achilles, you'll go from that hip joint to the knee joint. The glutes will go from that low, you know, that low waistline to the bottom of the butt. And then of course the quads, the entire, roll um, length of that muscle. Safe rolling, you're looking about 10 to 12 passes. And of course, you're slowly gonna glide up and down that muscle. If you find anything tender, you know, a little bit sensitive, it kind of stings, you'll sit on it, hold a few extra seconds. You can even um, ruffle it. So what that means, you'll kind of just work small little movements over that little knot to break it up. And of course, like Juan said, if anything's tender, you feel numbing or tingling, if you go over a joint, literally leaning a little bit, you know, half inch forward, half inch back will get you off of those tender areas. So the next, the lacrosse ball. The lacrosse ball is another tool we use in the office. The lacrosse ball is really good for those smaller areas and also really good for around tendons. So you can see that the patient is rolling it from that heel and then they're gonna glide it from that heel to the base of the toe. So they're just slowly rolling up and down. You wanna apply a good amount of pressure, but you don't wanna put your entire weight on it. So just enough to feel it. You'll even feel it kind of get a little tender. You might even feel a little bit of crunching or cracking under that arch. A lot of the times, if you roll over it, it crunches a little bit, it'll dissolve, kind of break up that knot. 
You can even hold that pressure a little bit, another you know, five, 10 seconds to slowly start hitting those tender spots. Just be careful. You don't wanna be directly on the heel, so not on that heel bone and not directly on the bones of the toes. And with the lacrosse ball, since it's a small little area, you're looking about one to two minutes of just steady pressure. And also, of course, not rolling too fast. So you wanna make these one to two minutes count. The calf stretch. So the calf stretch here is broken up into two different muscles. The first one is the gastro stretch or the gastrocnemius. So that's the upper part of the calf muscle. You can see person holding the wall and they're actually stretching the leg in the back. So of course, toes will be pointing forward. Heels will stay on the ground. Don't let that heel come up. Holding the stretches at least a minute to a minute and a half. That gives that muscle enough time to start to stop fighting that little tender pinch or pain you're feeling. And then of course it comes down to actually hold that stretch and it starts to get more comfortable. If it's something that's too tight and you can't get to that full minute, break it up. Start off in 20, 30 second intervals and then slowly increase that time as you get better at it. And then the second one, the soleus. So with the soleus, what it does is just shortens that muscle. So you can see the girl, she has her knee bent. That just changes the angle and starts targeting a little bit lower on that calf muscle. So if you feel your stance is too wide, you can bring your back foot in a little bit and that'll help get you into that. With this one, also be cautious. Don't let that heel pop up. But if you notice pain into the knee because of the bend or into that side of the hip, make sure your form is straight. Sometimes you can lean your hip out, which will cause that little bit of that angle pinch, which causes pain from that hip into that knee. The executive stretch. So for anybody that sits at a desk, as long as your chair doesn't roll, this is actually, you can do a few times throughout the day. You can see you're sitting really tall. So make sure feet are on the ground, keep your spine nice and tall. You're gonna cross one leg over the other. That's your starting position. And then you're going to try to lean at your torso. So your upper body getting close to your shin. You can also even use your hand to help push down that knee. And then you will feel that stretch between your glute your low back and that knee. So on that outside of the leg that's lifted. And the same thing, the stretch, you're gonna start working for that minute to minute and a half. If you can't do it for that length of time, break up your, um, your time reps. And of course, if you do one side, do the other side. Especially the stretch, you will notice a difference between right and left side. One might be a lot tighter. One, the knee might not even be able to get flat. The knee might be pinched a little bit higher. So that just lets you know that that hip, that glute is a lot tighter and doesn't have that range of motion that it should have. The yoga toes. So like Dr. Gonthu said that, you know, the running pain or walking can come from your feet, but a lot of the times our feet are just a little bit weak. So the yoga toe is just a really good, simple, basic exercise to start strengthening the arches, the ligaments on the top of the feet that go into the lower leg. So you're probably a little bit confused with the picture. So starting off on that left picture, okay, you see all four of the smaller toes gripping that floor while that big toe is up. Okay, so that's one portion of it. Okay, and then you will switch. So dropping those big toes and then those little four toes will come up. You will feel this directly pull in the bottom of the arches on the ligaments on the tendons on the top of the foot. With this one, make sure the knees stay nice and bent. So you'll be sitting on a chair. Don't let the feet um, sway in and out. So you want everything to be flat on the ground and then you'll do repetition. So big toe up and down is one and then little toes up and down is one. My normal go-to with this for my patients is two sets of 15. At first, you might realize you can't do it, and that's perfectly normal. A lot of people aren't very mobile in their toes, but this just encourages more mobility and flexibility into the toes, which obviously give you that grip of your shoe, and especially if you are a runner or a, you know, a distance walker. And then strengthening the lunge, okay? So if your balance is not the greatest, definitely use a wall or tape a counter for this, okay? So the lunge can help start strengthening knees, glutes, it keeps the back nice and straight, nice and straight, but also it does start working, you know, that lower half, okay? So your hands, of course, will be on your hips for balance, if not a counter. You'll open up the stance, of course. From here, you'll slowly drop down into the lunge, making sure the knee from that first foot does not go across the toes, and then you're just going to push yourself right back straight up. 
With this, you can either do it alternating between right and left side, or you can do a certain set number on each side, then switch to the other side. The biggest thing with this is make sure knees, everything falls into alignment. So knees straight down and up. If you notice your knees cave in a little bit or bow out, that lets you know that you have to target those glutes or those leg muscles to keep everything in line. And of course, if any of these cause you pain, stop from doing it. This, the squat. So this squat is actually a training squat. So it has more of a sit to stand. So gets you in and out of a chair. So you can start off standing right in front of your chair. And then of course, you're gonna lower yourself, arms are out in front of you or across your chest, whichever is comfortable and easy for you. And then you'll sit into that chair, okay? And then as you go back up, you wanna make sure that you're squeezing your glutes, pushing through your heels, and then that's what's lifting you up. A lot of the times we kind of plop out of our chair or kind of rush to where we kind of thrust our hips forward. And that's just really bad mechanics. It puts an excess load on that low back. And we're not using those muscles that are meant to help you get in and out of this chair, okay? And then this can also just be a training tool to where like, hey, every time you get out of your desk, squeeze your glutes, push through your heels. That way you get out nice and straight versus all wobbly and losing your balance and only make sure you can do this if your chair is stationary, not on rolling wheels. Great, thank you, Becky, for all those stretches and exercises. Um, some of the questions that came in, and a couple, a couple of them came in were, can I get this information anywhere? So what you could do is go to www.arosti.com. Um, there is a spot for injuries and body parts. You could go and go there and kind of click on the links and they'll show you pretty much everything that we talked about. Um, again, these are all uh, stretches and exercises, warm ups that you can use to you know, help get the body going for your runs and for your walks. Um, let me go through these next couple of slides pretty quickly. Um, I know we have a lot of questions in that, uh, coming in, so I wanna make sure that we get to all of them. So uh, just real quickly, we do take outcomes of all of our patients. So when you come into the office, we do ask you to fill out a survey when you come in um, after each visit and definitely at discharge. The reason why we do this is that we want to make sure we are progressing in your injuries, pro progressing in your conditions, and making sure that we're doing right by the patient. So as of right now, we have a, over a million patient cases coming in, uh, came into the office. With those admitting patients, we are at 3.2 average number of visits. So it's about three to four visits to injury resolution. One of the big numbers that we're very proud to share on here is that we've been able to prevent over 16,000 surgeries. So these are all patients that were recommended some type of surgical intervention to get rid of the ache, the pain, the condition that they're dealing with, came to Rossi, went through the visits, and at the end of it felt like they no longer needed that surgery. So that's huge. That's a big number of savings, not only uh, money-wise, but also time-wise with your family, friends, work. We want to make sure that we get you back to doing what you love as fast as possible. We also have 88.3% of reported full recovery, uh, but we also compare that to the 99.5% of patients that would recommend a Rossi to friends and family. Now you might be asking yourself, well, why is there a difference between patients that you actually fix versus those that would recommend you to friends and family? And it's because we did right by that 11%. They came into the office, they got the examination done. We were honest with them and let them know, this is something that we can't help you with. Let's get you to somebody that can. Again, we don't charge you for that visit unless we actually do treatment. So if you come in for the examination and it's something that we can help you with, we don't accept the copay, but we will refer you out to somebody that can fix this hopefully for you. And this is just a reminder of all the things that we treat at Arosti. Um, like I mentioned, we have lower back pain, uh, pain in the shoulders, plantar fasciitis, everything that we talked about here, headaches and migraines. Again, if you do not see what you have going on here, that's okay. We, we just probably didn't have room for it on the list. It's not your job to know what you're coming in with. It's not your job to know the diagnosis that you have. It's our job. You come into the office and just let us know where it hurts, where the pain is coming from, and then we will figure it out and have that conversation with you. You don't have to have x-rays or MRIs either to come in. We will determine if we need those or not. These are our locations here in the, in the valley. So, of course, you heard from Dr. Ganthu. We also have Dr. Ramon in Edinburgh. We have Dr. Saragusa out here in Hardingen. And then we have Dr. Badazo and Dr. Lara in Brownsville. So these are three locations throughout the valley. All doctors treat the same, same injuries, treat the same way. The only difference between them is location. Um, and what we can do too is if you, let's say, live in Hardingen but work in Edinburgh, we can do one visit in Edinburgh, one visit in Hardingen. Whatever is more convenient for you is what we want to make sure you can get in and out of the office as fast as possible. 
Um, so just to remind everybody about the benefits, so Hidalgo County um, for employees and dependents, we are uh, in network with the Edna Health Plan. A Rossi is an in-network benefit. You do not need a referral to come and see us. So you don't have to go see your primary doctor first and then have them refer you to us. We're direct access. Bere uh, best way to get scheduled is by calling this 1-800 number that's on here. So it's 1-800-446050. Um, we do not, uh, we unfortunately do not take walk-ins. So you cannot come to the office and make an appointment there. The job for the doctors in the office is just strictly treatment. So there will not be anybody in the front desk or anybody to come and greet you. So the best way to do it is calling that 1-800 number. It's our corporate office in San Antonio. That's where they take all of your insurance, all of your benefit information. They'll have all the communication before you actually come into the office. Um, one thing to note too is that all of our appointments are an hour long. So if you're scheduled at nine in the morning, you're in at nine and you're out by 10. There's no having to worry about take the whole morning off or the whole day off. All you have to worry about is that one hour of treatment. Again, it's gonna be 30 minutes of manual therapy and 30 minutes of active rehab. Both of these components are very important to your treatment and to make sure you progress um, in uh, resolving your injury. Um, there is a QR code right here if you want to scan it to make sure you, you can make an appointment uh, today or later. Um, again, opening up your camera function on your phone and pointing it to the QR code will lead you to the link. Um, if not, just go to my booth later today. I will be there and you can go ahead and get the information from there. So again, I want to thank everybody for jumping on here. Um, we're going to go over a couple of the questions that have been coming in, but if you do not want to submit a question um, through the Q&A or through the chat, just have my information on here. You can go ahead and um, talk to them. Talk to, uh, send me an email. Thank you so much, Juan, and thank you so much for providing us uh, so much information. Also, Becky and, of course, Dr. Ileana, we do want to go ahead and start with the Q&A session because, as you mentioned, we do have a, a few questions already. So let's go ahead and start. And the first question that I have is, how can you tell the difference between normal soreness and an actual injury? So normal soreness is, is not going to be severe. It's not going to keep you from doing your normal daily activities. And another thing is it's gonna go away in a day or two, it's gonna start you know, to feel better, uh, even if it's gradual. Um, a true injury is gonna stick with you. It's gonna be uh, something that uh, is probably going to keep you from doing your normal daily activities or your workouts. Um, and this does not go away. Usually we say, if it doesn't go away after about you know a week, then it's it's something that um, that you need to come into the office for. Okay, thank you so much. And the next question that we have is, since we mostly see it all day, what are the best stretch movement or exercises recommended? So because you sit for a lot of the day and sitting causes a lot of hip tightness, any stretches for the hip flexors are gonna be really helpful. Any stretches for the glutes, like, um, you know, stretches for um, like sitting down, crossing your leg and kind of leaning forward so that you're stretching your hips and your glutes at the same time. Um, and then any exercise or warm up that's going to activate your glutes. So a lot of the times uh, we prescribe to our runners and our walkers, something um, that requires side to side walking. Like sometimes people will put bands around their thighs and then walk um, walk to the side, like right, take a few steps to the left, a few steps to the right, and that activates some of those glute muscles that we really need for stability as we run. That's going to uh, decrease your risk for the shin splints and the IT band, especially. Okay, thank you so much. And we do have a question, kind of a follow up for the movement. So is, is there a specific foam density we need to get so definitely you don't want to get uh, the foam rollers that look like a pool noodle material. Like they look kind of spongy. They're usually pretty colorful. Um, a lot of the times we tell uh, people to go get the black ones just because typically the black ones are going to be pretty dense. They're going to be able to push back on that tissue like we need it. They're not going to cave in in the center uh, and they won't break down as easily. Um, usually it, when it is labeled, it'll say high density foam roller. Even if you go onto Amazon and kind of Google that like high density foam roller, it'll, um, they'll have that, uh, that foam roller that, that dense, with the density that you would require that won't break down on you. Because if you get one that's too 
uh, too soft, it's gonna break down on you and you'll have to get another one pretty often. It won't push on the tissue like we need it. And um, another thing is some of, some people have those foam rollers that have like the bumps on them. Um, those typically have like plastic or PVC pipe or something really hard or dense in the center of it and then have like a foamy sort of material over it with the little bumps. Those are fine too. They're just because it is PVC pipe in the center of that, it's going to be um, uh, harder and it's gonna push back on your tissues more. It's a little bit more intense. So normally that's a progression to uh, the regular foam roller if, if um, you aren't feeling too much with the regular black high density foam roller. Of course, if you have one of those already, it's fine to start with that. Just know that um, it is going to be uh, kind of intense to start off. Okay, perfect. Thank you so much. And the next question that we have is, I have lower back pain. What warm up do you suggest so I can run safely? So foam rolling is going to be really, really helpful for anybody with low back pain. So rolling the mid back, the low back, the glutes and the quads and hamstrings. So it's just because you have low back pain. And especially if you feel that low back pain when you run does not mean that you only roll the low back. So you have to roll everything that kind of plays into uh, your run. So definitely foam rolling through the uh, those areas through the, the mid back, low back, glutes, quads, and hamstrings, and then hip flexor stretches, because a lot of the times the low back pain is coming from those hip flexors being so tight. A hip flexor stretch is always a good thing to, uh, to stretch out before a run um, with or without back pain. Okay, thank you so much. The next question that we have is, does icing your food help with plantar fasciitis? Yes, yeah, so um, icing the foot is going to help uh, decrease some of the inflammation and the irritation that that plantar fasciitis is causing. Uh, of course, in order for uh, a big, long lasting change to occur, you have to change the biomechanics. Um, so you can, you know, roll the bottom of the foot and you can ice the bottom of the foot, but if you don't move up the chain into the calves, the shins, the hips, depending on what's going on and decrease the tightness through there, that plantar fasciitis will continue to come back. So icing it down for 20 minutes on, 20 minutes off, and 20 minutes on will definitely help, but it won't take the pain away on the long term. Okay, thank you so much. And we do have uh, time for one more question. And the question that we have is, how do we set up an appointment for assessment? Do we need to do this through our primary care provider or are we able to contact the office directly? So you're able to contact the uh, con contact us directly. So you can call the 1-800 number that we provided. Um, that one will lead you to our corporate office. They'll make you an appointment and you can come into the office and get that assessment done. Uh, for the VIP chats, I did send out the link earlier. You can go ahead and go through the chat. You can click on that. Um, you'll fill out as much information as possible that you can you know, put on there for us. Um, and then you can schedule an appointment to talk to one of our doctors, but you do not have to go through your PCP or anybody else to come and see us for direct access. That's correct. And just to add to that question, I guess one, uh, like you mentioned before, it is covered under the county's medical insurance. There is a copay associated with it, which is kind of like a specialist fee, which is $40, but it's something that they eat already in network. So you can definitely take advantage of that as your clinic to manage any sort of pain. Uh, especially for musculoskeletal, musculoskeletal a condition. So I definitely, that's something. Definitely, uh, and, and just a quick follow-up to that one before I move on. Um, we do, we are again in network with the Aetna from the county, but if you do not have the county insurance, that's okay. We are in network with all major carriers. Um, so just call that 1-800 number. They'll go ahead and verify the benefit for you and let you know exactly how much it is before getting in. Thank you so much for clarifying that. And yes, also, I do want to remind the attendees that Juan is going to be on their boot for our Rusty, so today and tomorrow. So feel free to chat with him, ask any questions. I know we did have a couple of questions coming in that we weren't able to, to answer at this point, but feel free to go to the exhibit hall and connect with Juan Gauna just so we can have more conversations regarding the topic. Juan, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much, Dr. Ileana and me. And also, Ms. Cantu, Dr. Cantu, thank you so much for being here with us. 
Thank you everybody for being here, for attending and for having a really engagement conversation regarding the topic. I hope you have a great lunch. Stay healthy and stay safe. Thank you everybody. Thank you everybody.